Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'd like to take some time and talk about shoes. Um, I'm going to start out by talking about the shoes that I took with me on my AT hike and, um, and describe why I have no regrets about my shoes. So here we go. Um, when I started the AT, I didn't know a whole lot about shoes and I didn't know about sizes and I didn't know about socks, sweat, and all that. So, but I'm going to start off talking about the boots. Now, I started my AT uh, towards the end of February and it was still cold and there was snow on the ground and there was a lot of ice, a lot of storms. A lot of uh, rain so <laughs> these boots came in absolutely perfect for me um, now I learned on the trail that I needed to switch over to trail runners so but first I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about these boots I can't pronounce it uh, so I'm gonna spell it out for you so it's a h n u um, so that's the brand name um, spelled out for you since I can't pronounce it. <laughs> so I was very, very pleased with these boots. And of course, once it got warmer, my feet um, definitely started getting sweaty. So my um, great friend, my trail sister, Flash, uh, says, you need to get some trail runners. Um, I hadn't, I don't even remember if I brought other shoes. I think I was just going to, you know, wear those boots the whole time. So she talked me into going to an outfitter with her, and I did. And so the salesperson um, picked out some shoes for me, and they were the Solomons. And I think these are the Ultra 2. Um, um, yeah, so sure. Whatever you say, if you think it's a good shoe, I'm, I'm golden. Um, but then the salesperson goes, you need a size bigger. So they measured my feet, figured out what my normal size is, and then picked out a size nine and a half, <clears throat> which was a size um, larger than the, the eight and a half that I, I usually wear. He had me stand on a ramp at an angle like this and then he was asking me if I could feel my toe or my toenail hitting the front of the shoe and I did and he says well you need to go up so half a size bigger so these are a size 10 and um, he proceeded to tell me why um, he said that the more you walk the more your feet swell they swell, they're widening out, they need space. So that's why you will hear um, people talking about the toe box being wide. Um, and then you'll, you'll hear people say that they get, you know, a half size to a size bigger. Um, and that's the reason. So uh, I think for long distance hikers, uh, our, t our feet actually grow a size. Um, so it took, it took a, a long time for my, uh, feet to bounce back to an eight and a half. Um, for the longest time I was buying shoes that were like a size 10. So <laughs> along with these shoes, I got super feet. I'm taking them out of another shoe. Um, now these are the ones I actually wore on the AT. And the time that I bought them, I bought two pair. I bought these purplish pink ones and then I bought the green, and I think the green are more, they have a, a, a bigger arch, I guess. Is that the right way you say it? A bigger arch? A higher arch? Um, I think these are a little bit flatter. So I started out with these, and when then I felt my feet were just really, really tired, I switched out to the green ones. So I obviously still have these from the AT. They're not nice to look at. <laughs> But they're still in great shape so they are in my Camino shoes um, so I'm gonna put those back um, so I got super feet I got the new shoes the trail runners and I got 
two pairs of socks. So with my boots on the AT, I had my boot socks. So they were just a longer version. Um, I kept these, um, and I wore I wear these at you know I wear these at night, um, and I wear them with my camp shoes. The other two socks that I pairs of socks I had I don't even know what brand I had but I'm probably you know they were probably just some cotton just regular old socks um, and so I got two pairs of darn tough so um, I didn't have enough money for pizza after that shopping spree <laughs> just kidding um, so I came out of there with two pairs of socks two pairs of super feet and a pair of the Solomon trail runners. Um, and I couldn't have been happier. Um, obviously I brought all those home with me. Um, I still wear them. I'm very proud of them. They, you know, 2000 miles worth of, of walking, um, on, uh, well, almost 2000 miles, <laughs> at least on my trail runners. Um, uh, the, you know, you have to watch out for the grippy part on the bottom. When that starts wearing down, um, you need to replace your shoes. I do believe I replaced these at least once, uh, while on the AT. Um, I'm not sure when, um, but I did have a fall on the AT and it was on slippery rock. And that's how I knew that I needed to replace them because the bottoms were lost their grip. Um, so yeah, don't let your, 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 the bottom of your feet <laughs> or the bottom of your shoes, uh, lose their gripping. Um, and then I had my camp shoes. So these were not only camp shoes, they were my water shoes and, uh, all this was picked out before I left and, uh, I was living on a lake. So, you know, Crocs were definitely a big thing. And I love the Mary Jane style and they're very, very, very lightweight and they have the holes in the back and on the side. So you could put a carabiner wherever and then have them dangle off your backpack somewhere. Um, so when I got to camp, I would put on my boot socks and I would run around the camp um, like that. And then I would... Um, um, sleep in the socks and then if I had to get up to go to the washroom or whatever in the middle of the night I just put my well, their camp shoes that's what I used them for and they were perfect uh, dual purpose because when my socks would get sweaty um, if a rainstorm came in I would stop I would get you know underneath something to get out of the rain and I would take off my trail runners and my socks and I would put these on um, and then I would walk in these <clears throat> without socks um, and until, you know, it got drier. And then I would put dry socks, dry clean socks on. That was the extra backup, was dry and clean. <clears throat> and as the sun came out, then I would put the wet socks or uh, the socks that I wore that had a little bit of sweat going on. Um, I'd let them uh, dry out uh, pinned to my backpack so three socks were very necessary for me uh, on the AT and for the Camino I'm thinking three pairs as well um, I don't really I don't see myself needing socks at night I mean it's not something that I do normally so I don't think I'll be wearing socks at night um, I think it's gonna be warm enough uh, where I'll be staying so I won't need socks, but I'm gonna have three pair, one being a liner, and then uh, two being the darn tough socks, but I think I'm going with Gingy and a darn tough, and I'll have that in a list um, once I definitely get closer to finalizing it. So I'll, I'll link it below, and if I change it, I'll put an update next to it as, as April comes, um, as it gets closer to time for me to Dead out. Um, so that's that's my shoes for the AT. I don't have any regrets. I was fortunate enough to uh, have hiking buddies who uh, helped me clear out my pack because uh, I definitely overpacked. Um, I didn't have some of the right gear, so I definitely was um, 
given suggestions on on how to make my hike better and it worked and I'm very happy that I had people that were that cared enough to made sure that I was successful at getting to uh, the top of Mount Katahdin and then of course back down again so, <laughs> so that uh, I just wanted to go over my AT shoes and, and, and what I chose and what I'm very happy or why I'm very happy that I chose uh, made the choices that I did and I'm not changing too much for the Camino, but a, a little bit. So for the Camino, um, I thought about taking Solomon's again because they, 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 they perfect shoe. But the more that I looked into the Camino, that the terrain was uh, is a bit different. Um, so more street walking, cobblestone, uh, you know, flatter, rockier surfaces, I guess. Um, not necessarily all flat, but not the same, not boulder walking and stuff like that, uh, like on the AT. <clears throat> so when I chose, I chose to try a different shoe. Um, I knew I had, you know, my Solomons and I don't really need, but I really wanted a lighter pair and I wanted something with more cush and more grip on the bottom. And I chose the Brooks um, adrenaline. Uh, I think they're adrenaline 22s. I'll put a link to the exact, um, yeah, that's it. Adrenaline 22 OTS. So I'll put a link to those in the description below. Um, so I tried on three, two, I think two or three pairs before I got this size. Um, because I couldn't figure out exactly what size to get. Um, I knew that once I got a size bigger, so I went from eight and a half to ordering these at a nine and a half and they were too small. And the way that my driveway is, I got a natural, um, uh, decline. Uh, so I would just stand there and just kind of see where my toes hit on the shoe. And... So the nine and a halfs were too small because my toenail was right up against the front of the shoe, the toe. And so I sent those back and got a size 10. And I'm like, there's no way that I could, I, I need to go higher than a size and a half. So <laughs> same thing happened. So I sent those back and ordered 11. So these are size 11. So make sure that, um, you try whatever shoe you decide to go with. Make sure that you 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 make a little decline, decline, incline ramp, whatever you want to call it, and just make sure that you are at an angle. Um, don't break your neck trying it, trying to do it, but you know, see where your toes land inside your shoe, and if they're not hitting the front, that's what you're aiming for. Don't take my word at it. Uh, I'm just describing what um, I've learned, and I'm not. Uh, I'm definitely not a podiatrist, and and these are just suggestions. And um, I'm just sharing what I I've done and the decisions I've made and why. So um, those are the shoes that I'm going to start out with on the Camino. These are my daily hikers. And when the environment is wet or my socks are getting moist, um, or if I feel a hot spot, which is key, if you feel a hot spot, you need to stop and you need to change out your shoes. You got to do something different. So when I feel a hot spot and um, I've got my Tevas to change into, so I will put my Tevas on, let my um, socks air dry and put my shoes up in the backpack somewhere and I'll wear these. And if it's cold, I'll put socks on with them. Um, if I'm crossing any rivers or I wanna play in the water, these are my water shoes. Um, so uh, these are gonna be my two shoes that are gonna get me through the Camino and beyond. <laughs> so uh, then, um, because I, these are going to be my alternative trail, uh, walkers, right? So for shower shoes and albergue shoes, I'm going to have 
recovery flip-flops. And they're very lightweight. Yes, I could go back to the Crocs, but I really want the, really, I like flip-flops. Um, I've worn them ever since I can remember, and I'm a flip-flop kind of girl. So um, I don't mind the strap between the toes, and um, that gives me just enough um, toe box room, so to speak, that I can let my feet air out. And since I don't plan on wearing these outside, um, they won't have any environmental stuff on them. So <clears throat> I won't wear these inside the albergue, um, and I won't wear them in the shower because I, I, I'm not going to bring in, you know, <clears throat> stuff from the the road and the trail into the albergue so I'm going to keep my trail shoes and my sandals um, hiking sandals uh, separate um, and then inside it's going to be my shower shoes my recovery shoes my go to town get go shopping shoe kind of thing um, the other thing I wanted to mention about socks is um, not only do you need to pay attention to the feeling of a hot spot and you can do some research on what other people describe as a hot spot for me it's just that burning sensation that you get in one area of your foot somewhere where it is rubbing against your shoe it's wet um, and you're about to get a blister so get familiar with that feeling and when you feel it change out your shoes right away um, I know a lot of people have said they treated their hot spots by <clears throat> taking off their shoes and socks immediately, um, letting your feet in that area dry out, and then um, placing lamb's wool between that and some bandage tape. And then what I would do um, is put on my hiking sandals at that point because I don't want to keep rubbing that area and turning that hot spot into a blister. So that's the key. The other part of having uh, backup socks is one when one gets a little sweaty, um, you can let that dry off by pinning it off, pinning it onto your backpack and just let it air dry. Um, and then you can put on the new clean socks and you walk in those until they start getting sweaty. So you just keep s switching your socks and you just your goal is not to let them get moist at all. Um, not by sweat, not by rain, not by river water, not by, you know, just sitting water on the ground. <clears throat> you really want to keep your feet dry. Um, the other thing that came in really handy um, on the Appalachian Trail was gaiters. And if you're not familiar with gaiters, um, they keep the sand dust um, out of your sock and your shoe. So that's another way of getting a blister, is getting a little bit of debris into your shoe. Um, and a lot of times you're not going to feel it. You're not going to feel it until that hot, stop, the hot spot starts to form. So um, I will be bringing my gaiters. I don't have them out now, but that'll be in another video. I got them from dirtygirl.com and they're kind of a silk, silky, uh, um, material. And what they do is they have a hook on one. And so it, it, it attaches to, it hooks to your, your shoelace here and then I think the back hooks somewhere, somewhere else. Um, like these shoes, these shoes, these shoes don't have any kind of a hook for a, a hook to 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 be clipped on. My Solomon's did. So Solomon's had this um, thing, which is really good for hanging them off your backpack as well. But for the gaiters, so. Um, when it, when I do a video and I'm describing exactly what I'm taking, I'll definitely be putting on my gaiters again and seeing exactly how they will work with these shoes and then I'll describe them. But right now my thought is if, uh, I'll wear my gaiters, I'll take my gaiters cause they're so lightweight. They, they actually, they hardly anything, they don't weigh anything. So, um, 
I'll take those. Right now I'm thinking I'll take those to prevent debris getting into my shoe and my sock. Very important um, when you're trying to prevent blisters, which is why I'm describing all this today. <laughs> um, the other thing that you can do is, uh, you know, one of my favorite things to hike in is leggings. Um, you can wear your socks. Uh, these maybe socks that are a little higher, a crew, a crew cut possibly, um, that you could, that goes over your leggings. So this would, the top would be, um, your legging would be tucked into the, into the sock. So that's just an extra barrier to keep little rocks and debris out of your shoes and your, so you don't get a blister. So <laughs> there you go. So a little mini recap. You want to make sure that you spend your money wisely. Whatever goes between you and the ground, I think that's the saying that I've heard. Uh, that's where you spend your money. So uh, when you're hiking, that is uh, definitely going to be your shoes and your socks. So expect to spend uh, quite a bit of money. And because you want to make sure that's, that's your mode of transportation. And you want to do everything just like... Um, if it was your your car, you want to make sure that it's well maintained and it runs perfectly, and that means you know you got to pay attention to what you're feeling, what you're hearing, what you're and and what you're you know you're supposed to be doing to keep up with maintenance. So your feet, yes, you want to keep them blister free. So socks being very very dry and clean is very very important. Shoes fitting you properly but bigger, allowing your feet to swell, because they will. Um, and your feet may even flatten, so insoles may be a great um, avenue to, to go with. Um, it is always best to talk to a podiatrist before you set off on a hike if you feel that you don't have enough experience and you want to get a idea what he sees she sees in your feet so that you know what shoes to look for what inserts they may recommend um, and I'm sure they'll go over all the blister care and prevention um, as well so keep that in mind you're trying to prevent blisters so that you can keep walking you don't want pain you're, you're going to have pain you're going to your, your legs are going to be sore, your muscles, your toes, your heels, your everything's going to hurt, um, but you don't need a blister. You don't need a hot spot that turns into a blister. So um, listen to your feet and hopefully uh, we'll be on the Camino together soon or you'll be enjoying a long distance hike with a little bit more information on how to prevent uh, blisters and that you can enjoy your hike or your walk. For now, I'll say goodbye and until the next video. Thank you.